Hi, I've got a difficult video to make today and this one, well, trigger warning. Um, I'm going to express a view which may sound at first provocative, but I hope you will agree that actually it's balanced and it's reasonable. Dare say some people will disagree with me out of principle on this. Um, point I'd like to make is that if we're not careful, so it has been mental health um, week re re recently, and if we're not careful, it's possible that we could actually make mental health issues worse by talking about them. It's always possible to make things worse if you handle it badly. <laughs> always, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't talk about mental health. Not at all. You know, we should always. Um, it's always better, t I think, and I have been partially trained as a psychotherapist. I went to the um, School of Psychotherapy in Newcastle and didn't complete the course because in the end I realised it wasn't a profession. There was too much bureaucracy in the, in the profession actually. That's what got me out of it. I wanted to do, I wanted to do a lot of talking with people um, and the profession's turning quite bureaucratic, so, so I'm told. Um, it, if we handle the conversations badly, we can make people's mental health situations worse. But as a general rule, it's useful for people to vent. It's useful for people to talk. It's useful for people to express emotions. Um, but like all things, this must be in balance. And one of the areas where I think we may lose a bit of balance is that we have a society now, I think, um, that is almost kind of encouraging people to self-diagnose. And that's not particularly helpful. We have young people who are self-diagnosing their mental health illnesses, some of which may be genuine. Yeah, plenty of people suffer anxiety, depression, so on. You know, and all manner of thing, bipolar disorder, for example. But you will get people who self-diagnose themselves as being bipolar or being depressed or suffering not just from anxiety, but from an anxiety disorder. Now, anxiety is not a mental illness. It's an emotion. It's actually a perfectly normal emotion. It's a perfectly healthy emotion. There's nothing ill about being anxious. If you're, if you're not anxious ever, that's an illness. <laughs> yeah, Anxiety is actually quite a healthy emotion within the normal range of anxious emotions. It's a desirable thing. Um, but if you're anxious to the point where it's extreme, where it's interfering in normal day-to-day -day activities, where it's crippling you, um, and having a, a significant impact on your day-to-day -day living. Okay, well now, now we're getting into the realms of mental illness, but it does seem sometimes that we're talking about normal emotions as if they're all bad. And I can tell you, anxiety is good for you. It's really good for you in moderate doses. Um, yeah, if someone goes into a NIBOSH exam or an IOSH test with no anxiety, uh, there's a very good chance they're gonna fail. Because it's the anxiety which makes you prepare. Yeah, I'm nervous about this video because it's a this is a emotive subject. So it's like that's forcing me to choose my words more carefully than I might normally do so. Anxiety is good. There's plenty of scientific data out there which shows that people who suffer moderate levels of anxiety live longer lives than people who suffer low levels of anxiety or high levels of anxiety. So it's like low anxiety, high anxiety, bad, somewhere in between probably quite healthy. It causes us to make better health choices, better dietary choices, take fewer unnecessary risks and so on. And so we have fewer accidents, we have fewer diseases. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, so we worry about our health and our safety a bit more. So some anxiety is fine, but the problem is, is that we're talking so much about mental health nowadays that some people who might be struggling to cope, temporarily struggling to cope, you know, because we have ups and downs. God knows I've had my ups and downs. It's like they might self-diagnose. They might start to say things like, I am depressed, or I suffer from, I suffer from depression, or I suffer from, ang I suffer from anxiety. That's a very different way of talking. Um, you, know, you would normally say, I'm feeling anxious. I am feeling anxious right now. That implies it's a temporary thing, a normal, passing emotion. But to say I suffer from anxiety, because you suffer from anxiety quite often, you know, because we do, don't we? We do often get anxiety. It's quite a common emotion. But if someone starts to identify as someone who is anxious, then that actually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And as soon as you identify as something, 
you adopt that as an identity and we cling to our identities. Yeah, so if you believe that you're depressed, it's like you will cling to that. It's like a safety net in this mad chaotic world. If you identify as depressed, it's like, well, this is who I am. It's like a rock to hold on to. And then you fight against people who want to take away your identity. If someone suggests, well, no, I don't, I don't really think you're, you're anxious at all. It's like, we will resist that. We act as if, if we believe we are something, we tend to act as if we are. It's self-reinforcing. This is my real life. Maybe I'm just getting old, but it's like my self-talk about myself actually just amplifies those behaviors. So if I tell myself I am a certain way, you know, if I tell I, I, I'm this, I'm that, I tend to act that out even more. You know, it's, it's like if you, if you expect bad things to happen in your life and you're talking to yourself negatively, well, it's funny, isn't it? Bad things tend to happen in your life. You, you almost, you're bringing it about yourself sometimes. You know, obviously not, not the unpredictable stuff, but your self-talk influences your behavior. And so we end up just talking ourselves into more anxiety, more depression. Now, this is obviously a trap that you don't want to fall into, and it's a trap that I have fallen into on many occasions, and you know, so I've had to wrestle myself out of it and change the self-talk. But we, we, when dealing with our friends, dealing with our colleagues, for those of you who are mental health first aiders, you, know, you will have covered on your mental health first aid course the importance of being non-judgmental, which most people take to mean that when you're listening, you're not criticizing. Yeah, when we say non-judgmental, you listen without flinching, you listen to the dark thoughts, the sad thoughts and, uh, thoughts and so on. You, you listen without flinching. But there's a flip side to being non-judgmental. The other side of it is don't approve. Don't reinforce their statements about suffering from something. You know, if they were to say to you, says, well, I, I suffer from de depression, uh, you, know, you want to find out if that's being diagnosed or not. And if it hasn't been diagnosed, you want to avoid confirming that. You want to avoid diagnosis. And this is a standard part of mental health first aid training, you know. But for those of us who haven't been through that, please do not confirm people's self-diagnosis of themselves. Now, don't disagree with it either. You know, just let it lie. Their statements about themselves, don't confirm it. The goal is, if they think they're suffering from an illness, is to refer them to get professional help, you know, get a counsellor, get a psychotherapist, whether private or the NHS or through a company counselling scheme or whatever that is, but leave it up to the medical professionals. You know, even the mental health first aiders have to leave this up to the medical professionals to handle this subtly and discreetly. You know, and uh, well, I can just kind of quote my, one of my tutors on my psychotherapy course, she was a psychiatrist of about 35 years. I can't remember her name, it's been a while ago now, but going back, a few years, she said, she just said very provocatively, she said, we talk so much about mental health now that we're actually making it worse because we're encouraging people to self-diagnose. So we need, to, like in all things in life, we need to strike a balance. We need to be able to ask people if they're okay, get them to vent, but at the same time, don't get them to self-reinforce these, these diagnoses that they make. Anyway, let me know what you think. It's an emotive topic. Just be aware of my mental health when you have a go at me, please. <laughs> going to get the mental health advocates just charging at me now and taking no no care of my mental health um but yeah let me know let me know what you think are, are we are we sometimes handling these conversations badly catch you later